Mario, for all his, he was the most unpredictable man on the planet. And I liked him, I got on great with him, but he was so unpredictable. Uh, it, in the dressing room, his locker, two lockers on either side of him were empty because nobody would get changed next to him because he was scared of what he would do. And I used to do tours of the training ground. Peter Barnes, Asa Hartford, Tommy Booth, uh, Richard Edgell would show this group of 14 or 15 people around the stadium and then they would be transported over to Carrington and I'd show around the training ground. We'd go in the gym and the medical room and the kit room, boot room dressing room and the week after Mario had left I took this party into the dressing room and I said this is Mario's locker open the locker door and about 30 parking tickets fell out <laughs> I think he owed he owed Manchester City Council thousands of pounds in in like fines when he left and I, I can remember him doing an extra bit of training one day and he lost a diamond ear. he used to come up full of jewelry diamond earrings brace necklaces everything all like top stuff, diamonds and stuff. And he, he'd done a bit of extra training, lost this diamond earring on the training ground, came into the dressing room afterwards and said, Chappie, I've, I've lost this diamond. He wasn't bothered. It was like 10 grand, this diamond earring. Would, would you have a look for it? So me and Brandon went outside and were on our hands and knees looking for this diamond earring. Never found it. Well, told him I did find it. No, I never found it. And... Uh, but as I say, it wasn't bothered. It's was just ridiculous amount of things that I could. Uh, he used to get fined. Oh, in the locker, when these parking tickets fell out, there was a wage slip, and he'd been fined by the club that month a hundred grand. He was always getting fined every month, virtually, for one misdemeanor or another. He used to live at one Dean's Gate, and he used to drive his camouflage car from one Dean's Gate to San Carlos, the restaurant across the road, park it on double yellows, and wonder why he got his car impounded 27 times. <laughs> but that's just one character of an innumerable number of characters that uh, have passed through those doors. There's been some, and obviously in the earlier days when players could get away with a lot more than they can now, there was a lot more characters in it. I've, I believe Scott Carson's quite a character out in this in this current squad, but there've been some phenomenal characters throughout the years. Unbelievable characters. I heard when when City were at Carrington one story that um, that he used to use your um, let's say ex exhibitionism and 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 uh, madcap antics to raise money for charity by saying to players like Mario Balotelli, who clearly have a little bit of spare cash. Uh, to to do bets on you, and um, is it true that you dived off the 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 roof of the uh, of the Carrington training complex into a paddling pool wearing sort of flippers and and snorkel and all that sort of stuff? Is that did I that didn't happen? wear I didn't wear flippers or a snorkel, but I did jump off the roof into a paddling pool, and Casper Michael filmed the event. I've actually got the video of that somewhere. Casper Michael filmed the event. Unfortunately, I jumped into the paddling pool, which only had about 18 inches of water in the bottom. And uh, it was a bizarre thing, really. My feet hit the water and just shot out. And I landed on my backside in the water. And uh, I think I, yeah, I think I had goggles on. And I might have had, I did have flip flops on. Yeah, you're right. I did have flip flops on. Yeah. Uh, Joe, ba Joe Barton was watching. Uh, another kit man called. James Black, he was there as well, but Casper Michael did the filming. That, and as, yeah, as you said, that's just one of numerous ridiculous things that uh, I did at the time. Consuming lots of um, mustard and stuff like that. That was Ben Thatcher. Ben Thatcher would get me to drink the most bizarre concoctions, but would demand money off the players for me to do so. Uh, it could be a glass full of mustard, tea leaves, prawn cocktail sauce, pepper. I think the worst thing I did was drink a, a three quarters of a bottle of Tabasco, um, for which I asked the doctor beforehand what damage it could do to me, just to make sure. Uh, and the other thing was I had to snort 
two lines of pepper, each about a foot long, one up each nostril, and then eat a tablespoonful of pe pepper, and I couldn't sneeze or have a drink for five minutes. Wow. But I think I got a gram for that. <laughs> well, you deserve... And then, uh... Stu and then Stuart Pierce saw me doing it one day, and he pulled me on one side. He said, uh, that behaviour is not exam acceptable. So that was the end of that one. I was actually going to say, you know, that you played a, a vital part in in creating this this togetherness and and bond between players. Whether you did it consciously or unconsciously, you were always loved by by all the players. To you know, more probably than anybody else that's ever worked in any role like that. Is it essential that there is somebody like that? You mentioned Scott Carson. I don't know who it might be. It might be Brandon. It might be somebody else because we've seen Brandon on the you know behind the scenes videos. D does every club need to have something like that to to Got to get rid of all that tension in the dressing room. Well, I, I, it certainly helps. Yeah, I think quite a lot of clubs have a certain character in the dressing room who does you know, daft things or funny things or something that that, that gets the players uh, going. Get get gets a better atmosphere in the dressing room. I always class my job, possibly because I've been a player in the past, but I always class my job as not just providing them with kit, not just cleaning the boots. Uh, I did a service for them. I, I, everything they requested, I would do my utmost to provide for them. I, I got dressed up as Santa Claus once and drove from where I live in Delft to Hale Barnes for Antoine Sibierski's kids on Christmas Eve. You know, I, I've been on holiday with loads of the players. And I'm not dropping them from the team. I'm not leaving them out of the team. So they get in a, you get in a position of trust you get in a position where they know you are doing the service for them. They know that you would do anything for them, and I would. And, and so you, you, you create great relationships. The unfortunate thing is in football, you make great relationships with people, and in two years, they've gone, and you never see them again for the rest of your life. I'm fortunate in some ways that I've kept in touch with quite a lot of those players. And, uh, I'm still in touch with them. And... Um, you still miss them. You still miss the antics that you used to get up to. Uh, there's nothing like being in a dressing room in a football club. It's the most, I miss it every day still. It's the most amazing place to be on the planet. It's amazing to me that you're not in some way still connected to the club with, with everything that you've done. I mean, I've got to ask you about Micah Richards. I'm assuming that Micah is, is somebody who was on your wavelength. Yeah, Micah had this infectious laugh about him. He was always laughing. Yeah. One of the funny things about Maker is he used to strip off in the dressing room and it looked as though he'd been painted and he never did weights. He had the most amazing physique. Great athlete. Had some unfortunate injuries, but a most amazing disposition event. One of the greatest lads in that dressing room. And there's been a lot of them, a lot of great characters and great, great people, not just characters, but really, really good people in those dressing rooms. Maker was a typical example of full of fun, done brilliantly on TV, and good luck to him. He deserves it. I'm going to ask you an unfair question now. I'm going to say, have you got a favourite? Because it's a bit like saying who's your favourite kid, isn't it? <laughs> it's, I mean, there are so many. And if I mention two or three, I'll have forgotten another half a dozen that I could easily include in this, this answer. You know, Richard Duns and Paul Bosfelt. Michael Tarmat, Kolarov, Jekyll, Vincent Company. There are so many, really. I, I mean, I'd feel awful if I'd have left somebody out who I should include, and there are so many I could include. 